Let's prepare for embroidery. Now, whether you're using an eight inch or a 10 inch hoop, you'll need to bind both rings with either white cotton tape or bias binding. And all you do is take your tape, you can secure it with masking tape or a pin at the end if you need to, and wrap it around and round each hoop so that you can't see any of the hoop. So you're just overlapping it there. If you want to see a detailed video of how to bind a hoop, please go back to my stitch wheel preparation video where I cover this in more detail. So when you come to the end, you just stitch these ends in. And um, it does help prevent hoop marks and it helps to keep your fabric taut. It avoids any potential stain from the hoops going onto the fabric. So there are clear advantages in binding your hoop. I'm going to go through the pros and cons of using an eight inch or 10 inch hoop in a second. So we'll, we'll cover that. If you have the design printed off from my website and you haven't bought the kit, you'll need to transfer it onto your fabric by attaching it to a window with masking tape, putting your fabric on top and tracing it with probably a ruler and a water erasable pen. That is going to wash out later. You can, you can obviously also use a light box if you, if you have one. Now I'm using a seat frame here because it enables you to have both hands free when you're stitching. And what you do is when you've bound your rings, put your fabric with your design onto the bottom ring. So the one with the screw goes on top and Keep, keep this fairly tight, the one with the screw. Don't, don't loosen it too much. It's harder to get the fabric in. And then simply press. And you can pull the fabric at the corners if you need to. And put it into your hoop. Now I've got this in an eight inch embroidery hoop. The advantages of an eight inch hoop are that you've got your design quite close to you when you're stitching. The disadvantages are that you're more likely to see the hoop marks when you get it out and you will need to probably wash and stretch it to remove those. Um, the 10 inch hoop, you've got more fabric here, so it's perhaps harder to reach some of the designs, but you won't see the ring marks close to the design. So there are pros and cons really. Um, I'm going to wash and stretch my work anyway and I'll demonstrate that at the end of the, um, the last video. The water erasable pen will come out with water spray. I would suggest that you do it really all at the end. I have done it intermittently because I want to show you the finished insect but I'm going to wash the whole thing at the end and I'll demonstrate that, as I said, in the last video. A word about keeping your threads tidy. If your threads are on a card, please don't take them off the card all at the same time. Just take one, extract one from the loop here and it should come out easily like that. You can also do that with the DMC thread and you can extract, although it's six stranded, you can extract just one strand from the, um, from the loop here. And if you're stitching with two strands of this or three strands of this, you would extract individual strands and then put them back together again to stop your thread getting twisted. The variegated silks here are hand dyed and so there may be slight variation in the colours. Each batch is different. All your thread will come from the same batch but it may be slightly different to the one I am using. I 
I traced my insects one or two at a time. I drew the insects by hand, by eye. Um, if you've bought the kit, I've included the um, designs that I have used. You can obviously work out your own and you can put them in different places on the bug box as you wish. You can leave some out. If there's a particular insect you don't like, you can obviously replace it with something else or put some foliage in. So I wouldn't advise you to draw all the insects on at once because the water erasable pen will fade and you may change your mind about what you want to do. So just do them one or two at a time. If you're not doing it by eye, you will need to take your fabric out of the hoop each time and trace it onto the, the respective hexagon. Before we start outlining the hexagons, just a, a word about starting your threads. I've put a knot in the end. I'm mainly using a cruel needle, um, but I'll tell you when, when we need to use the tapestry needle. And I'm starting with a waist knot away from my work. So we're going in on top and then wherever you need to come up. So for example, if we were doing this hexagon, you would come up and start stitching. Now this waist knot can be cut off after stitching. If the thread's long enough, you can thread it up at the back and put a few stitches over your stitching at the back. If it's not long enough, you can cover it over with a few stitches at the back. I'd suggest that you sort out your waist knots as you go because what we don't want is lots of stitches crossing each other between the insects, which might show through after your work has been completed. So try and just be aware of the threads at the back. You don't want to cross between insects or have these um, waist threads crossing either. So tidy them up as you go, every perhaps two or three insects or each one if you wish. We're going to now start with the hexagon outlining. <laughs> 